This is the Hidden Killers podcast with Tony Bruski. Featuring former FBI special agent and chief of the counterintelligence behavioral analysis program, Robin Dreek. So picture this. You admit that you were near a crime scene when people are asking, hey, who was around her? Who can give us some information on what may have taken place at this one spot at this one time? And yeah, I got it. I was there. Let me, let me answer your questions for you. You answer the questions. Go back on about your life for the next two, three, almost four years. You work in the community. There's a big poster up where you work stating, who knows this man, this person who was in this area as well? You're walking by it every single day. Nobody says, hey, that looks like you. Because it really doesn't. All those years later, suddenly you're arrested and you're charged with the crime that you were raising your hand and saying, how can I help you with this all those years ago? That's Richard Allen. That's the man that is accused of being the murderer in the Delphi case of those two little girls. Now, innocent or guilty, we don't know the answer to that question yet. There's convincing evidence that points to, well, possibly he could be. There's much convincing evidence that points that why is this man even arrested? Uh, just trying to get to the bottom of that is where this case is still sitting at. Uh, and it's a case that I cannot not imagine being the family of those two little girls and going up and down this roller coaster. Joining me to discuss, Robin Drake, retired FBI special agent. Uh, one of the, the key points that we've been looking at right now that just continues to boggle the mind early on in an investigation they did interviews with a lot of people, some people who were Odinists. It's also been brought up in this as possibly being someone who may have had an interest in doing some sort of ritual or sacrifice. It, it, it gets weird. Uh, but nonetheless, interviews the week of the murder. From your experience in the world of law enforcement and the FBI and investigating things, how important are those pieces of evidence? How important are those interviews early on in a case? There's, there's nothing that isn't important in a mm -hmm. case. Yeah. Uh, I mean, just talk about how every little piece, you have no idea where it's going to go. You, as we said before, in multiple cases, you got to go where the, the leads take you and you got to go where the evidence brings you. And you don't know what is going to be a critical piece of evidence down the road. So here I was, as I've, we've shared on the show before, I was in New York during 9-11. Mm -hmm. And I had no, I had lead number two on the investigation into the Twin Towers being hit by two planes. Mm -hmm. That lead came to me, and here's what it said. This individual saw a plane flying down the Hudson River. Go interview him. Well, no kidding. You and about a million other people saw that plane coming down the Hudson River, but it's a lead. Yeah. It got called in, which means I have to interview it. I have to document it. I have to take the person's information down because you don't know what could come of it. You don't know what the other things this person might have been part of. And because that nothing else, you're making a relationship with someone if they re recall something later on. I mean, there's so many things that go into it. So part of the the grind of law enforcement investigations is you run down every lead and every lead matters. Mm -hmm. It gets entered into evidence and evidence gets secured. Sure. And to lose anything is wrong. Yeah. It wouldn't be something where a couple years into this, when you're really trying to, to dig into this case and figure out all the, the happenings, the who is where and what, if, if suddenly all that information was just wiped away, oops, that, that that's a little bit more than an oops moment, but the, the prosecutors in Delphi and the law enforcement in Delphi are saying that stuff didn't matter. Anyhow, it's no big deal. It's okay. We accidentally recorded over everything. Literally, we pressed record and just kept recording over everything that we did that first week. That's not just a shucks. That happens. Is it? That's not a moment like that. And they didn't own it. You know, we no. keep talking about this whole leadership thing was like when you see chaos is because there's a lack of leadership. And what we're seeing here in the Delphi case is a complete lack of leadership on the prosecution side. Yeah, it's chaos. Every week we have something new that makes us go, hmm, things that make you go, hmm, say that there's chaos. And when you when something goes amiss like this, you don't make an excuse as to why it wasn't important. Well, to someone it's important. Otherwise, it wouldn't have been there. Yeah. And just own it. 
Want to listen ad-free? Want advanced access to all of our interviews before anyone else? Become a True Crime Today Premium Plus subscriber on Apple Podcasts. You get every episode commercial free. So you can binge on True Crime. Until you can binge no more. Search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts now. Or go to our podcast page and sign up now. More of the Hidden Killers podcast next.